prata engelska så jag slipper skriva undertexter hela jävla tiden. Ja, engelska kan jag ju. Kan du engelska? Ja, vad bra. Har du inte sett det? Har du någon spärr på den här? Okej. Okay. First shot. German shitty surplus ammunition, 7.62 NATO. Actually, perfectly okay, I guess. Come on, man, you can't call that perfectly okay. For German surplus shitty and um, corroded ammunition, it is okay. Yeah, it probably, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, we didn't even get uh, the velocity of that written down, but I believe it was something on around 830 meters per second out of the rifle. And the second group is uh, ELD match, Hornady, 168 grains. 805 meters per second and an extreme spread of seven. So I shot that one as a first and then it just kept going to the left. It's kind of windy today, but I mean, still pretty decent. But group. it's blowing from the other direction, so it should push it to the right. <laughs> yeah, but if you see all groups have, have favor left. And, and what's this? No, that's not from ours. Okay. Okay, so third group is uh, Superformance. With a stupid name, match 168 grain. Uh, yeah, this one. Yeah, uh, same thing. That one struck high. I could not. Didn't really. Usually you can feel if you go high or low or left or right or something, but I couldn't feel that one, so I'm blaming it on the ammo actually. Okay, so this uh, should have a bit more recoil since it had 840 meters per second, but it had an extreme spread of four, which is very nice. You, you can be happy if you get that while reloading yourself. And uh, the fourth group uh, is uh, both tail hollow point, ILD match, 168 grains. Fairly slow, uh, 791 meters per second, and an extreme spread of 15, which is uh, it's okay for match ammunition, I guess. Especially if you buy it, factory, yeah. off the shelf. So this is factory, Hornady. Yeah, it's fine. And the fifth group is Hornady Amax Black, 155 grains, 819 meters per second and extreme spread of 14. Well, looks like a revolver chamber. Not sure how that is. Oh, that's pretty decent. Yeah. And then we have this. So it's the top group, I guess. Yes. And this is the 155 grain black AMAX, 861 meters per second, really fast ammunition, extreme spread of six. Three first rounds, and then the final two. Yeah, so the, the, the three first rounds are kind of, yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, that's that's nice. But it had uh, quite, quite a bit of felt recoil, I noticed. Oh so, yeah. Since it is such a fast ammunition. So that could, yeah, it will require some practice to get good at that. It's not an easy rifle to shoot good groups with because it's, it's a really light rifle. It's really good packable and everything, but it, it's hard to shoot tight groups yeah. with a light rifle off bench, especially if you buy pot on the bench. And then we have this group. And this is the 155 grain uh, Sierra Match King. Uh, 853 meters per second, extreme spread of eight. And it's the GGG, it's a Latvian, com Latvian company that makes uh, match ammunition. They use the, yeah, the Sierra Match King bullet. So what we can, what is painfully obvious is that uh, the Desert Tech likes 155 grain ammo. And uh, this load, how was the recoil on this compared to the one before? I would say both of them felt about the same. Twice. When you shot them, the recoil was very, very similar, yeah. which you can also see that the shot placement on those two are pretty similar you yeah. have three here two here and there you have four and one up there yeah so i would say it's about the same i'm i'm, I'm gonna blame this one on you oh you just blame it's always the shooter yeah <laughs> it's well, the indian not the arrow true true well that worked and then we have this the train group, wreck the train wreck it's uh pre partisan or ppu uh, 145 grain and that's total shit ammunition one it, two three four five yeah it's a shotgun Compared to the corroded German shitty surplus uh, 762 NATO, yeah, that, that's just, that's not good. So, if you want to shoot good with a Desert Tech uh, SRS A2, which this one is, I'd, I'd, you should aim for 155 grains. I'd also say that this one, since you said it's blowing from the left, and you can see 
you see there it's one going from the left to right. I could say maybe a little bit of wind, but I'd say either the 168s or the 155s. Yeah. Would be pretty decent ones. I could bet you that could be done a bit better. I also blame those ones on me. I'm not that good of a group shooter, but I mean, still pretty decent. Yeah. Okay. So now we know what to shoot. <laughs> the question is just how to shoot it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, we've been shooting this. I haven't actually shot this yet when filming this, but I've been watching uh, my friend uh, Marcus, who's actually a good shot, shoot this. And uh, I just listened to him doing his little video, so I'm going to reiterate what he said, because I haven't shot it yet. So apparently this is a really good rifle. Uh, ergonomics, ergonomics, it's bullpup, so people used to regular rifles might have a bit of a learning curve using this. Uh, we shot it with the suppressor off because uh, we weren't sure with the suppressor if it impacted the uh, performance in any way, so we just shot it with a muscle brake, which I hate, so I had to hold my air muffs all the time. Uh, the result was that 155 grains like GGG or Hornady shot best with it. Uh, so if you're planning to use it on using this for precision or anything, try the 155 grainers first. Otherwise, when uh, using this, this is just a nice rifle. You get what you pay for. This is hideously expensive, ex at least in Sweden. So you get a really good rifle, uh, which uh, the big selling point of this rifle isn't that it is a bullpup, in my opinion. It is that it has a really quick system of changing the barrel. So uh, on this side of the rifle, you have uh, like a locking nut or something. You can set it to locked and open. You turn this on and 180 degrees and then it's set to open then you have some nuts here you can loosen those and then just pull out the barrel pull in a, like a 338 Lapa Magnum barrel or something uh, change the bolt if you do that and that's it takes Question. like yes do you have to change the entire bolt or just the bolt head I don't know I have never tried it watch some other video on the internet for that information so anyway the magazines are uh, you have a little spacer here for 308 so you can cycle those, remove that and put in the big boy cartridges and you're good to go. Cycle's fine, really nice, no issues, no lockups, no, we, we shot like 60 rounds or whatever and yeah, zero issues. And for some reason, pre-partisan is shit, never ever use PPU ammunition, just getting that out there. Uh, actually, really, really shitty corroded uh, German surplus 7.62 NATO shot a lot better, funnily enough. Actually, I don't have enough good things to say about this rifle, except I wish I could afford one. Uh, this is on loan from uh, Fredrik over at SCR, which is a really good uh, gun salesperson, buy his shit. Uh, yeah. Okay, we're gonna try this at some skill stages or whatnot at 400 meters or, or whatever. We'll see if I manage to hit anything. Okay, well, vice core. Man ligger i närheten i alla fall, slipper man flera par timmar men... Ja, jo, precis. Se. Ta stora plåten längst bort till vänster och får se vad den tycker om den. Ja, den är väl 30 alltså, den borde du väl ta. Bra killgissning, det var långt på den här. Då har vi den näst största då. Den är jävla kluget. Just nedanför. Släpp upp, ja, han skrev ju liksom en hel del. Han skrev ju 50 mm i höjd där borta och här är det 20. Så det är svårt. Jag testar att höja den. Om den är precis nere för plåten. Ska jag droppa den i 4 cm? Jag testar det för att se om den tycker. Vad har du för bussar? Rell 700. Ah, ja. Ja, kaliber. 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 Ja, det har varit lite trött i alla fall. Det är nästa storlek då. Varför finger mat eller? 
Bra format för Bayern Italia. Jag fick inte. Det här var 223 då. Jaha. Så det jag får inte till och matta det. <coughs> så att, eh. Och det tog att du, du byggde om att du tränade matta. Ja. Ah. Det är inte riktigt pipa i det. Åh fy fan. Ja. Men jag ska bygga en 6,5-2-4. Ja. Nej, jag kör. Nej, nej, nej. Sjuk i 2-4. Nej, nej, nej. <coughs> alltså, du är vinnare. Alltså, nej, vad ska du tävla med nu? Sitt det här eller? Lån har du flera efter. Nej, nej, nej. Det blir en att... Du, blir med, du behöver inte fart. Alltså. Minsta du plåten längst till höger. Typ när jag vann SM i fältskyttet. Ja. Du körde jag 130 grejer när du är 850. 6,855 Ja. Ja, alltså det är fart. Nej, nej, nej. Men alltså, för det gröna tillsorna. Jag, jag träffar jag också. I... Det är inte som det ska. Mm. Tänk traps. Jag mm. brukar använda kitt. Tänk traps. Vad är det för Det var Janne. Nej. Jag vet inte fan vad han hittade den där jävla inte. Inga ljuddämpare, inget fint. Jag tror att han jävlar ut med mig. Och sen det här är gjort själv. Ja, ja, ja. Ja, för det är fan att det är Ja, ja, det är vet jag. Nu, det är det som Annars har jag ju såna där yngelbromsar. Jag har ju bilen en av alla. <skratt> Nej, det här fick jag inte. Jag kör på det. Och för ut jobbar jag som, 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 som kräkare. Ja, ja. Och så har vi ett svårt svar. Okay, so conclusion on this wonderful hideously expensive rifle. Uh, it's really good. You can get access to the bolt if you have an awkward shooting position. I was a bit worried about that because I've heard uh, people use the regular rifles that they're complaining about the bolts being all the way back here. Didn't have any issues with that. Uh, actually, in some situations, it's actually better. But it's the same with everything you buy. It's give and take. You have to just train and get used to it, I guess. So, the rifle works, precision, wonderful, all that good stuff. So how do you buy this in Sweden? Well, actually, uh, I heard a story about one person buying this and the police asked them, does it have a folding stock? And uh, he could truth truthfully say that it's impossible to fold this stock because, yeah, the mechanism is back here. The bolt is here, are we gonna fold the bolt? Would be a very bizarre rifle if you folded the bolt, right? So that made the police quite happy. Uh, there's a lot of bullshit in Sweden about buying uh, rifles that are black and uh, naughty and eats children and all that. But this one shouldn't be an issue. One of the other really, really stupid, bizarre arguments the police uses is that you can shoot it from the hip. Why you would ever want to fire a precision rifle from the hip, I do not understand. But look at this. 
and uh, forward this video to the police if they ever ask this stupid question. So how are you going to fire this from the hip? You're going to turn up the bolt handle. It isn't possible. And it's really awkward with pistol grips. It's easier with a regular hunting rifle <laughs> because it has this angle on the, on the grip. But yeah, you're, you're going to bump up the bolt handle and then you won't be able to fire. This is not a rifle that is possible to shoot from the hip. There you go, police. Uh, just give them the license. If they have the money to buy this, they deserve it. And that's about it from me. Have a nice day. Have a fantastic weekend.